school. I just, I, I'm, I'm excited by what it is that you're doing, and I aspire to do something similar, you know, to be able to, my aspiration is to have shows on all over the country in addition mm -hmm. to the internet, but I watch the way that you're doing it, and you have, you have sponsors, you, you know, you show up every week, you have a different show, and that, to me, that's, that's mm -hmm. really cool. Now, what, do, what would you like your audience to know about you that you've never been able to quite get across to them because you're the one who's doing the interviewing usually? Oh, that's one of those left field questions. Oh, I sorry. Did, I, did, I usually do. Um, what don't they, something that they don't something know about Something that me? you have not been able to mm -hmm. tell them about you because, you know, you're usually the person who's doing the yeah. interview as opposed to the person who's being interviewed. So is there something that you'd like them to know about you? Um, I don't know. What drives you? What, what? Insanity. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what, what, basically, I'm always available for everyone, uh, for everyone, um, um, by I try to have a really good relationship with people, mm -hmm. and uh, you, I know where I'm going with this. You mentioned a pedestal a little earlier, right. and, and I kind of cringed a little because I was my hus my first husband. I was on the pedestal, and then when it was convenient, he would take you take off, me <laughs> off, and then <laughs> slam me back on it. And, and, and but there was a good opening there. I think that I'm just a regular person. Mm -hmm. um, you, if you can't pronounce my name, that's great. Uh, just Lillian. But I can't do it by myself. Mm -hmm. uh, and when, when the time comes and something needs to be done, they say, oh, don't worry about it, Lillian, take care of it. But sometimes I really need help, mm -hmm. whether it's financial and, uh, I mean, you know, donate tapes to me or something. Now, people were really wonderful right after the earthquake and donated some equipment because right. mine got lost. But if you see me on the street, stop and speak to me, you know, and. Um, I'm just Lillian. You're just Lillian. Yeah. <laughs> just Lillian, who produce, has produced 160 yeah. some shows and is pretty pretty super in and of herself. But all in all, just Lillian. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, just Lillian. It's it's like, uh, but sometimes I call people and say, "Oh, it's just Lillian," and they'll say, "Oh, I'm on a long distance phone call." And this other part of this just Lillian mind says, "Hey, I'm on long distance too." So I think. I have to practice what I preach because sometimes <laughs> I forget that. You know? yeah. So you're not you. You do want to be considered for your the specialness mm -hmm. or the uniqueness that you yeah. are. In addition to you don't want to be on a pedestal, oh. but you do want to be respected for what you do. That's a good word. Yeah. Yeah. yeah respect and um, always find time for. Now you also do readings. You do I shows. Do. You mm -hmm. do all the expose stuff on crop circles and government mm -hmm. conspiracies and. Yeah. You just are a mixed bag. Yeah, I, I suppose. I think my favorite is profiling. Um, um, I, I, uh, pro what profiling consists of is to, just like, the, like on TV, the profiler, mm -hmm. you, you take a person or an event and by remote view and look at it and try to make sense out of it so you can profile either the person or the company or the So you the step event. into their head, so to speak. You think no. like they do in order to I step into their circumstances and go ahead in time. No, mm -hmm. I would never. Uh, no, I don't think I enter their head at all. And and when you look for missing persons and murder victims and things, you can kind of do that to take an object and just follow the object and profile it and then reconstruct uh, what happened prior to this occurrence and then just go from there. I think that's my favorite. You enjoy doing that? Yeah, it's a real challenge. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I, I guess I'm a bit of a maverick in that mm -hmm. I, I enjoy using those kinds of skills, but I want to use them for something else. You know, mm -hmm. I, I, um, I don't know, I, I used to do, uh, I still do, some psychic work, but um, I worked on, I think, two murder cases in my entire mm -hmm. career, and that was enough for me, mm -hmm. because it, I just didn't want to go there. Well, yeah. first of all, death is not something that I entertain very often anyway mm -hmm. and um, violence is like way over there someplace for me mm -hmm. and the two together was just that was too too much 
Now, you see, I don't look at it like that at all. Uh -huh. uh, my my concern is is the people that get left behind, uh -huh. and it's for their face of uh, for their peace of mind uh -huh. and their comfort and what I can do for them. Uh -huh. And that's what makes me feel good if uh -huh. if I can help to bring closure, uh -huh. not so much for the victim. Uh, but for for the people, that, and that and evidently that, that there must be a real good. need for that because yeah. the the um, television shows and the books mm -hmm. and all the stuff about other side and communications mm -hmm. with the other side and I mean obviously the people over on the other side probably are busy and could care less, mm -hmm. but the ones that are you know buying the books and going to the John Edward shows and. You know, yeah. going to all the the events are the the families um, and the friends of the people who have crossed over. Right. It, they need that. No, they need that. And I do not charge for um, looking for missing persons, anything like that. So when the mother has a runaway, and they bring the runaway to me, and and you know, and they found him exactly or pretty close to and where we said um, to see this child, and then then to meet him and I said, are you going to do that ever again? They said, no, so what's the use? You'll just find me again. <laughs> you know, when you see him grow up, you know, and things like that. I, but I do charge for regular readings, you know, and they, right. um, and, and that's what I finance the show with because we are all volunteers, you see. Right. And so that's, um, but not for missing persons, that's now, I That's was fascinated. That was the other surprise. Mm -hmm. That was a curveball that came at me when um, I started doing a show because mm -hmm. I knew that you did your show and I knew that it, your studio time was, you know, was studio time. It's part mm -hmm. of the access, public access thing. Um, and I also knew that your tapes were, were an expense. Mm -hmm. There's a whole lot of hidden costs that oh, yeah. you don't even uh, you don't even think about no. until you actually get into mm -hmm. the production and all of a sudden there's you know twenty dollars for this forty dollars for that mm -hmm. fifteen dollars for that and it just even though if you were um, professionally producing the show and having mm -hmm. to pay for studio time that would be another huge chunk but all of those peripheral things um, yeah. tapes and mailings and publicity and all of that is additional expense that we have to be doing something to finance. Yeah, so just to get from, uh, like when, when I go on the road, you know, mm -hmm. and sometimes I'm able to combine what I do anyway, you know, with, with the shows, but if I had to make a special trip because of a show, and we go on location sometimes, well, in which case I like to cover the gas for the crew and, and things like that. So, yeah, it is, even with, with the sponsors sometimes, hidden mm -hmm. costs, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, you have sponsors, but they don't cover everything. No. Yeah, you know, they cover food, maybe, or they cover tapes, mm -hmm. maybe, but then there's still postage, there's still mm -hmm. gasoline, there's still, maybe Exxon or Conoco could. <laughs> well, they're a little bigger than I, I think those companies, I think we have to stay in a guideline within the local uh, community oh, for you? the sponsors, I believe, do because you? if not, it becomes more uh, commercialized. See. We we are not allowed to commercial. Uh, we are not allowed to have a commercial, sponsors, but you yeah. are allowed to have sponsors mm -hmm. as long as it's not. I mean, you can't put out an ad for them, mm -hmm. but they can sponsor you. Mm -hmm. So, they, I think they should give you a gas card. What do you That's think? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, <laughs> but we we do we do wonders with with the resources Nothing. that are yeah. there, yeah. yeah, yeah, that's very true. Mm -hmm. So tell me more, tell me something else. Oh, let's see, but I, I don't know. I've, I'm always amazed when you, when you come to visit our area because, you know, you've been inspiration to me also because actually the first time when I went public with who I was and what I did, the first time anybody ever called me to work a psychic fair, first person I went into was you. It was in Chehalis, Washington, at the Guiding Star. There was a man named Agba. With a, with a gray ponytail. That's right. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And there you was. And so that was it on, on the very first day. And then, of course, over the year, 
over the years. We've we, run into each other we, again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you came to me and asked me about traveling in a motorhome mm -hmm. and, and whatnot and yeah. how to do that and how I was doing that and that kind of thing. But you see, the wonderful thing is here that, that I don't always find, unfortunately, uh, there is no competition. And when we do the work that we do now, we shouldn't be competitive. We should all do this together. And, and I think that's why I appreciate you as a person um, and as a producer uh, so much because you are willing to share because we are not competing, you know, we are complementing each other. Well, we're, we're getting a message out. And, and I, now the, the focus of, of Star Journeys, which we probably should do another interview mm -hmm. where, you know, you're interviewing me. But um, the, the, my focus is to get the, to set a tone of what the planet or humanity mm -hmm. can aspire to be. And that's part of it, that there is no competition, that everyone has a gift to offer. Mm -hmm. And that, you know, you do what you can to assist everyone else in offering their gift because it's a benefit to all. You know, that's, yeah. I, I, I call it Star Trek world. Mm -hmm. You know, I want to live in Star Trek world where everybody has they're all allowed to do what it is that they do well, and they're supported in kind. Mm -hmm. And I, even though it doesn't look like it, I think that we're getting there. You know, we're, we're moving towards Star Trek world. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, had, I had, had a thought that I can't I can repeat here. But actually, you, we have our bumps, but I, I think you, you're probably right. If we can just get out of that, that Mimi, uh, that Mimi mentality, and Mimi is the, the person in my book that, um, in, in my setting, she was one of the main characters, that uh, she was so selfish that it was me, 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 and that's how she became Mimi. <laughs> uh, I, for the lack of a better description of this person. But there's this thin line when you talk about selfish and mm -hmm. selfless. Mm -hmm. Um, because you can go, you can go over the other side of that line where you are so giving of self or so um, effusive in what it is mm -hmm. that you do that you're, you're not taking care of yourself. And so then you feel put upon and martyred and, you know, all of that. So you're not serving then either. That's so stupidity. There's this, Pardon? That's stupidity. That's stupidity. No, uh, <laughs> but then there's the other, the other place of being selfish in mm -hmm. the sense that you take care of your own needs and you make sure that in taking care of your own yeah. needs, you also care for everyone else. And then, of course, there's the selfish where mm -hmm. you mean there's other people in the world besides right. me. Yeah, that's sort of what I mean. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But the one that we're trying to work at, I think, is the one where, yes, I have to take care of my needs. And in taking yeah. care of my needs, I also care for, for the planet and yeah. the rest of the people who are on it. Yeah, I think we're doing a really good job con considering, you know, that it's not really our agenda anymore. <laughs> so, which we, we, could, we could sort of go back to, um, we could just sort of go back to, uh, the crop circles and 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 some of the other thing, um, I I don't I don't know. Um, it, what would I need to do? Oh, I have to speak louder. Okay, well oh, I'll speak louder. Left. Yeah. So, <laughs> it's, um, I, I, I saw this commotion here and I thought, yeah, we can go to the crop circles and all these things and. Um, combine it all and as a, as a consciousness we are trying to change things. I, well I think we are changing yeah. them it's but it's kind of interesting I think we're eventually going to get to that place where it splits off mm -hmm. and the part of humanity that is very very focused on um, industry and drug companies and mm -hmm. uh, Mimi, <laughs> right. that part of humanity is going to continue to do what it is that they do, and they're going to do it very well. Yeah. And then the cooperative communal part of humanity, which um, those other guys call communism, mm -hmm. <laughs> or socialist thinking, I think will take over and do what it does as well. Yeah. Um, I, I don't think 
those things is all going to take place in my lifetime, though. I think it'll will take just a little longer. I'm sticking around for a long time. Are you going to leave? Um, eventually. <laughs>